Hi everyone, it's me, I'm back. I hope you're safe and I hope you're well. As always, you join me today in the allotment shed for today's episode. So as I discussed last week, I will absolutely, as promised, be showing you the squash patch um, and hopefully I will be cutting off some of my pumpkins today. Um, it's gonna be a squash related episode and they really really are about ready now so hopefully you'll be able to enjoy them with me i think i've got about eight or nine pumpkins this year so i'm going to cut them off um, before they get damaged or they are eaten um, and i'm going to take them home with me just to make sure that they are safe like i said i will also be showing you the squash patch this week it's pretty spectacular the plants themselves are starting to die back now but they are totally laden with squash. I might pick some today. I'm not sure yet. I'll go and I'll have a look out there. I'll decide if that's what I'm going to do. But today's episode is definitely going to be a bit of a show and tell episode, if you like. Um, I can't wait for you to see the pumpkins and the squashes. I'll give you a bit of a look around other bits of the allotment too, if we get time. Um, I haven't been a, this is an honesty moment now i haven't been into the polytunnel very much um the reason for that is we had an absolutely gigantic wasps nest in there they were feeding on our grapes and our tomatoes and i'm going to be perfectly honest i am scared of wasps i'm not their biggest fan i don't actively kill them i tend to just leave them um, but there were in excess of 500 wasps maybe in the polytunnel so I have steered clear of it for at least I don't know three or four weeks maybe um, so it really 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 needs some TLC but that's going to be a long job that isn't something that is just going to happen in one video so that would be why you haven't seen many polytunnel posts lately. There are peppers and chilies that desperately need picking in there too. It needs weeding desperately, but I wasn't going to go in and kill the wasps. I sort of asked for advice online on what to do and people said that they would just leave in their own time. So I've got to go and see the damage that has been done whether there are any crops left in there that I can harvest at all. Um, like I say, it, it has been completely abandoned for a month. Um, but the wasps are obviously how happy. They've now left, they've moved on, and none of them lost their lives. Um, I just thought that was the best way to be. If it means I don't get many tomatoes, then so be it. But never mind, we'll keep going. Like I say, I cannot wait to show you the pumpkins and just as always a big big thank you to all my new subscribers and followers on instagram i really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your hectic lives um to come and give me a follow so that's great so first of all let's head up to the squash patch and the pumpkin patch and see what's going on up there so as you can see here are my pumpkins in my pumpkin patch the plants are pretty much dead now so i'm gonna cut them all off today there are one two three four five six seven eight obviously that you can see on the screen and then if i pan down there's another two there um so before any lovely little creatures eat them i am gonna cut them back and take them home um yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'm going to get cracking with that now. Don't laugh at my um, choice of tools. I can't find my knife. I can't remember where I've put it. It's probably buried in the polytunnel somewhere. Um, but yeah, I'm going to hopefully get them all off using these.
so here they are now by all means they're not perfect and they need a good clean there's the odd flat side here and there you can see on that one it's not perfectly round but they're great i'm chuffed to bits with them these are the jacko lantern variety i'm actually taken from seeds i grew last year so yeah really really happy um yeah can't wait to eat them and carve them but i'm sure i'll put loads of pictures on instagram when i do that very exciting i love halloween but yeah let's go on to the squash patch now this is my squash patch now i think the only way you're ever going to be able to truly appreciate it and appreciate the size of the butternuts and the spaghetti squashes that are down here are if i basically take you for a walk down there and give you some idea of how big they are now before i do that you can probably see just in front of the camera here there's a butternut squash right there so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to move the camera around and i am going to go down and pick that squash up for you just to give you a bit of an idea of the size in comparison to one you'd buy in a supermarket so let me get down there now just so you can have an idea okay so this is the size we're dealing with um, I might actually just try and break it off if I can Okay, so this is what we've got. This is what I'm working with. Obviously way bigger than what you'd see in a supermarket. Again, these seeds came from last year's butternut squash seeds. Um, they are the Butterfly F1 variety. And obviously you can see that it's grown just beautifully. So what I'm gonna do is take you across the rest of the patch now. So you can see how many butternut squashes and spaghetti squashes there are here. I might pick a few more, though they might fill my entire car at this rate with the pumpkins as well. Um, and I'll just see how we get on. Um, but yeah, I'll take you there now. Okay, so we've obviously got the one butternut. You have to mind all the weeds. I'm sorry for that. But here I've got another one, two, three, four, and there's another one there, five, and then it comes to the next part, another six, seven, and these are all pretty big. They're not, they're not diddy. There's another there. Eight, nine, ten. And I hear what you're asking. You're going to ask me how many plants there are. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. There is actually another one. Seventeen. And one right at the very back there in the corner. 18. So there's 18 squashes altogether. Um, did I count that one? Oh, I can't even remember if I counted that now. I'll give you a final tally shortly, but it's got to be around 18 to 20. And I think I may even have missed one right up in that top corner. If I point just there. But I'll give you a final number on the screen when I've worked it out for around 20. Um, but I hear you say, how many plants was there? Well, there was a grand total of three plants that's produced all of these butternuts. So I'd highly recommend the butterfly variety. Then moving on to spaghetti squash. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I think there's one more there you just can't see because it's under some leaves. I think there's 13. And again, that was three plants. So the squash patch, albeit very weedy, now it's started to die back. Obviously, you can see the weeds peeping through. Um, but yeah, still really, really good. 
So what I'm going to do now is pick some of the butternuts as well to make sure I get them and make sure they're home. They'll store for months and months and months. So what I'll do is I'll just pick them, dry them, and then I'll take them home and I'll just put them in a cardboard box and probably store them in my conservatory. So um, yeah, a bit more picking to be done, I think. And here they are, a grand total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, I've lost count again. My maths game is not on point today. But there they are. There are this year's butternut squashes. And boy, am I pleased with them. Um, I think between the squashes and the pumpkins, I'm going to leave the spaghetti squash today. Um, because it's going to be a mission in itself getting these home. So what I'm going to do is put them in cardboard boxes and get them home and get them cleaned and get them dry. Um, and then they should store. Usually, I mean, I was still eating squash from last year in February. So as long as they are dry and they don't go off and you just regularly check them just to make sure they are still okay, you should get a fair few months out of them. Um, but yeah, what a crop again this year. I'm really, really, really happy. And now there's another area we can start digging over ready for the spring. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a lot of lovely butternut squash soup and just plenty more recipes. So watch this space, guys. So as promised, I said I would show you inside the polytunnel. Now, be warned, I did say that it is in a real estate, as you can probably already see. Um, haven't touched it for a month. Um, I didn't want to disturb the wasps and to be quite honest, being as scared of them as I am, there was no way I was going in there anyway. So I'll give you a quick look around. Again, it's going to be something for a future episode where I'll just do an overhaul of the polytunnel to see if I can actually salvage anything and get some of the chilies, peppers and tomatoes out. So we'll head in there now and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right, so as you can see, the well, the herbs aren't too bad, actually. All things considered, they aren't doing too bad. Um, a couple of them have gone to flower. That's something I can sort out. But it's nothing too horrendous. Um, herbs are brilliant. They're so versatile, and it's nothing that I can't deal with. Um, moving on to the peppers now. The plants are a lot bigger. They're a lot bushier, and there are peppers all over them. Um, I was so worried that there wasn't going to be anything, even the little pots of mini peppers. You know, the peppers aren't huge, but they have survived and they have produced at least one pepper on each plant. So I am overjoyed. Um, as I move down, there are peppers on all of the pepper plants. Um, there's black night peppers and there's sweet mini red peppers. And I mean, down here, I mean, there's like three or four hiding underneath there. So I'm hoping this weekend I will get in really, really sort of up close and personal and get a load of them out. 
you can see the chilies there as well there are hundreds of chilies in that back corner like i say it's such a state i almost wasn't going to show you because i was really embarrassed and the truth is it's just because i'm that terrified of wasps but at the same time i know they play an important part in the ecosystem so i didn't want to kill them um so yeah sad times um if you look right at the back there you might be able to see some orange habanero chilies might need a magnifying glass but they are there um but the disaster zone is the tomatoes um there's so many that are ripe but the plants have all basically fallen over um whether that's due to the amount of rain we've had the ground has gone soggy or to be honest it's probably that the tomatoes are just too top heavy now because i haven't been in at regularly picking but again i think i've got time i think there's time to sort this out i don't think it's the end of the world and i think if i do an episode soon well it's going to have to be soon for in the hope that i can salvage any of these tomatoes i will do that asap so maybe I'll do a polytunnel clear up episode, which will be quite fun. Um, there's not really much more to show you in the polytunnel, apart from the grapevine is making an escape. Um, but yeah, all in all, it just needs a good tidy up. Um, as you can see and here, there are no wasps in here now. They have moved on from where they were. If you guys are likely to know if I'm um likely to find a nest obviously a vacant nest now that would be great i don't know a lot about wasps because i don't particularly like them i don't really take much notice of them um unless there's one in my house then you'll see me pretty spectacularly dance out of any room which they might be in but i don't know i know what the traditional wasps nest looks like if you like if that's what you want to call it um but i have been told they can make nests underground um but on just looking around i haven't seen anything that makes me think that there's a wasp's nest in here but there most certainly must have been at some point but that's pretty much it for the polytunnel so let's head back to the shed so that's pretty much it from me today. As you can see, I'm losing light fast now. It's around 20 past six in the evening. So it is starting to get dark. Um, what I'm gonna do is take my pumpkin and butternut harvest home now. I'm gonna get them all cleaned up and dried out. And then I'm gonna take some more photographs, which I'll share on Instagram. Um, I'm really chuffed with them and I'm really, really excited to share them with you. They're not quite the same when they're covered in mud. So hopefully when they're home and clean and dry, there'll be something really impressive to look at. As always guys thanks for taking the time to watch this episode i hope you found it interesting and if you did please give me a like and you can always subscribe to my channel for further content i'm also on instagram and facebook you can follow me there and i'll leave the links above for you as well next week i'll be back in the kitchen doing another cooking episode i've not yet decided what next week's is going to be so any ideas leave them in the comments maybe something pumpkin related though i only did do that in the episode before last so we'll see how i go and i'll have a think about next week's episode but until then guys keep safe look after each other and i'll see you soon